how much would it cost to keep a galaxy-spanning civilization at war for 10,000 years? Your first question is probably, well, what's the currency? And if you're the Imperium of Man, the only currency that seems to matter is human bodies. 40k in general has this real issue with zeros where they either don't really understand the real scale of their setting or they don't want to throw really big numbers at the audience because big numbers scare a lot of people away. I'm not one of those people and today I'm really going to do my best to figure out exactly how much of the Imperium, or more specifically, how many human bodies are used on an annual basis for the Imperial Guard and planetary defense forces across the entirety of the Imperium of Man. Before we get into the numbers, I want to give you some parameters. So we're going to be going over some notable planets, uh, mainly only things like Eastvan before the drop site massacre. We've got Terra and we've got Necromunda, since those are three planets that we have the most concrete numbers on as far as population. Starting with the smallest or most conservative estimate, we are going to be including PDF forces and really all aspects of the Astra Militarum into our numbers. If you're not familiar with 40k, that might sound silly, but remember that a main source for the recruitment of the Imperial Guard is from Planetary Defense Forces. It's said that the top 10% of all forces in the PDF go on to the Imperial Guard for further training. So all three of our estimates, ranging from what we've got on the official sources on Lexiconum, the conservative estimate, and then the liberal estimate, or what I personally believe is more accurate. I'm giving a range of options because, realistically, the answer is going to be somewhere in between one of the extremes, and only GW really knows for certain. So, enough yapping, let's get into the numbers. It's said that there are a million worlds within the Imperium of Man at any given time. I'm gonna stick to a million pretty heavily, I'm not gonna stray away from that, it's not gonna be a million and one, it's not gonna be a million and two, we are going to say a million worlds just because it's simple. We know that worlds are lost and gained on a daily basis, but a million is a really nice round number for all the math. Of that million worlds, we know that 32,300 roughly are hive worlds, giving us a rough estimate of roughly 0.033 of all worlds in the Imperium being hive worlds. These worlds have a population exceeding that of 10 billion. Realistically, in order to be deemed a hive world, you would need at least 20 hive clusters, or hive cities. And each hive city is said to have anywhere between 500 million and 10 billion, respectively. If we are not including the three worlds that I previously mentioned, then we are given a rough, low-end estimate, keep in mind this is the lowest end estimate, of 16.5 trillion souls spread between the non-important hive worlds of the Imperium. I say non-important, but realistically to the Inquisition every single world is important, so I guess it's just perspective. I've come to realize that Eastvon really isn't important for population metrics, so we're just going to skip over that and we're going to go to Necromunda specifically. Necromunda is arguably the second most important hive world within all of the Imperium, briefly serving as the capital for an empire during the Great Crusade, but, but that's neither here or there, we can do our own video on Necromunda in the future. What's important is that this planet is absolutely steeped in humanity. While your average hive world might have anywhere between a few dozen and a few hundred hive cities, Necromunda has thousands with an S, meaning that at the absolute bare minimum, Necromunda has a trillion souls on it by itself. We're at 17.5 trillion people already, and we haven't even gotten to the home world of humanity or the most densely populated planet within the entirety of the galaxy. Using the absolute lowest end math, Terra would have more humans on it than the rest of the galaxy combined. Terra is said to have quadrillions of humans in it. A single hab block was said to have quadrillions of people in it. But again, let's go with absolute lowest end numbers, let's just say that there's 5 quadrillion on Terra. This leaves us with a nice round number of 5 quadrillion 17 trillion 500 billion. Now all that's left is the remaining worlds, and we're gonna say that each one of them has a super low end estimate of 50 million, and we're gonna just multiply that by the 968,000 remaining planets giving us a measly 50 trillion extra souls, bringing our super low-end population estimates to roughly 5.0675 quadrillion, or 5 quadrillion 67 trillion 500 billion. 
going with the absolute most generous wartime economy estimates, we are going to say that 5% of the overall population is put through armed forces training or PDF training at any given time. Meaning that at minimum there are 256 trillion trained men and women throughout the Imperium. The lowest end replenishment rates for modern militaries is roughly 1%, and if we use those numbers, we get on average 2.56 trillion new trained PDF troops every single year. And if the top 10% of that gets sent off to the Imperial Guard, we get on average 256 billion guardsmen sent off to training every single year. Now, despite this being an absolutely unthinkable number, like the human brain can't even quantify it properly, it's still not correct. It's not anywhere near what the setting actually should have for a standing army. Because on average, that means that there is only 25,000 guardsmen per planet within the Imperium that is being trained annually, and that does not seem anywhere near enough. Then again, 256 billion LAS rifles shooting at a single target would take out anything short of a supermassive black hole, and even then, I don't know, they might just rip a hole in reality. Moving away from these super conservative numbers, now we're going to go with some more grounded in reality numbers. So assuming that every single hive city in the Imperium and every planet within the Imperium is operating at roughly 50% of max capacity, we actually get some really, really cool numbers. The easiest way to do this is to just multiply the population by 10 on everything, because realistically every single hive city should have a few billion people in it. 500 billion per hive city is just way too low. Using this, we get a number of about 165 trillion souls just on these 33,000 planets. Add to that Necromunda, which, using these less conservative numbers, we're going to use 5 billion times 3,000, estimating the number of hive clusters, and we get a number of about 15 trillion just on Necromunda. Add to that, we have Terra, which again, we're not going to mess with, we're going to say that's 5 quadrillion still. The numbers here are going to sound pretty ridiculous, but already, despite not counting 99.9% .9 of all worlds within the Imperium, we are at 5.5 quadrillion. Assuming that now instead of 50 million, each other world within the Imperium has around 500 million souls, we get an additional 484 trillion souls, bringing us up to roughly 5.984 quadrillion before we even get into space infrastructure, which I did not include in the first estimate, just to be as conservative as possible. I'm going to be extremely generous with this estimate, because given how far in the future 40k is, you would expect the vast majority of all of the population throughout the Imperium should be existing in some form of either orbital habitat or mining platform or something of the like. Considering that planets and moons typically only make up around 1% of the total available surface area throughout the entirety of a solar system, it would make sense that, again, using the most conservative estimates possible, 10% of the population would exist on planets. Now, one of the main issues that I've been contemplating is that once you factor in orbital infrastructure and the likes, now we have to factor in the Imperial Navy. So, in an effort of fairness, we are going to split the military conscription down the middle perfectly even, giving the Guard and the Navy 2.5% each, respectively. Which, while that does sound like it would kneecap the Imperial Guard or the Astra Militarum at large, we have to remember that the population basically increased by 10 times. Bringing the entirety of the Astra Militarum at any given time, including the Guard and the PDF, roughly 1.5 quadrillion boots on the ground. Wait, no. Three quadrillion boots on the ground, because, you know, two boots each. Assuming 10% of that armed forces goes to the Guard for further training, that gives us 160 trillion Guardsmen at any given time. Assuming much less generous replenishment rates of 2.5%, we get a rough total of 4 trillion unlucky souls sent to the front line with nothing more than a LAS rifle and flak armor. This right here is why people love the Imperial Guard. 4 trillion regular men and women every single year laying down their lives so that way their loved ones can continue living in abject squalor. But again, even these? are rookie numbers. If this really is the most brutal regime imaginable, we can do much better. Starting off with the 10% of humanity living on planets, uh, no. 
realistically, it's 0.1%. It, it's way less than that. The only planet that I'm not going to be applying that math to is Terra, for, well, obvious reasons. All of the other 53 quadrillion souls that we counted in the last example would once again be just a fraction of the total number. If we now say that any and all hive cities or hive clusters are at 100% maximum occupancy, or at least what the authors say is max occupancy, we get roughly 10 billion souls per hive city. Meaning that Necromunda alone is half a quadrillion souls on one planet. And if that is 0.1% of the population of that star system, then that means that the Necromunda subsystem alone would have anywhere between 5 and 50 quadrillion souls. Granted, again, Necromunda is an anomaly because it's a former capital planet or ecumenopolis, but that's, again, neither here nor there. So, for simplicity's sake, let's get some numbers out of the way. For the other 33,000 hive worlds that aren't Necromunda and Terra, let's say that their maximum population is around 100 billion. This leaves us with roughly 3.3 quadrillion bodies just on hive worlds alone, which, remember, are 0.003% of all planets within the Imperium. The other 99% of the Imperium would also account for roughly another 4.5 quadrillion bodies. Meaning that just on planets alone, we are looking at roughly 13.3 quadrillion bodies at any given time moving around within the Imperium. This isn't including servitors, this is including baseline humans that would be counted in a census. And where the numbers really start to lose any and all cohesion is when we start to figure in what percentage of the population actually lives on planets. If we are to assume that as much as 1% of humanity lives on planets, which is a really high-end estimate, all things considered, this would mean that within the Imperium there are roughly 1.6 septillion people. Considering this is the most brutal regime imaginable, let's pretend that 10% of the population at any given time is in the armed forces in some degree. That gives us 160 quadrillion souls. Now, we have to divide that between the Navy and the Guard, or the Astra Militarum, so we have to go roughly 5% each. This means that each the Navy and the Guard, or PDF in this case, would have 8 quadrillion souls cycling through every single year. And if 10% of that goes to the Imperial Guard, that means that there are 800 trillion Guardsmen every single year sent to training. It, it's really hard to comprehend what that number actually means, but just imagine a ball of human flesh the size of the planet Earth, and that's basically the Imperium of Man if you combined it all into one space. So, for those of you who skipped to the end just to see the numbers, hello, how are you? Uh, here is a recap of everything we went over. On the absolute lowest end of things, we have 2.56 trillion troops entering planetary defense forces across the Imperium, and 10% of them potentially going to the Imperial Guard, meaning 256 billion potential Guardsmen every year. Our middle-of-the-road estimates were roughly 40 trillion PDF troops every single year being trained, with roughly 4 trillion potential Guardsmen every single year. And on the higher end, we have roughly 8 quadrillion troops entering the Planetary Defense Forces across the Imperium every single year, with roughly 800 trillion potential Guardsmen. If those numbers mean anything to you, congrats, you're probably insane. Either way, thanks for watching, hope you have a good day. Uh, after this is just going to be a channel update, so if you were just interested in the guard and whatnot, just feel free to leave now. Have a good day, man. But for whoever else is still here, uh, hi, I'm Bobby. Uh, thank you for getting us to 2.5k subs, it means a lot. Uh, I didn't really expect to get anything considering I just yap all day, but uh, yeah. Thank you guys for being here. A uh, special thanks to Kongaro for a lot of the channel artwork. Uh, at Victus for a lot of the um, artwork for channel members whenever we get that going. Um, as well as emotes for chat and whatnot. And as well, Icon of Ouroboros, who actually proofreads a lot of my scripts. Uh, I don't usually stick to the script, but he does proofread them and he actually fact checks for me. And I appreciate that greatly. But either way, thank you for watching. Do something nice for your community today. Donate to charity and uh, have a good day.